So we're going to talk about our vision and strategy. And uh, with me are my colleagues here, and me, Paul, and Rod. Can you introduce uh, your function with, as a role there, Paul? Sure. So I'm Paul Aiello. I run the uh, Sales and Solution Development Organization for ECT. Uh, what we do is we provide support for the sales organizations, both channel and direct, for everything from solution development and creation to sales development, channel development, and the PSC, PSIC organizations to do uh, proof of concepts and initial installations for you. And I'm uh, Rod Johnson. I head up product management, uh, and my team is just like Paul's is in US and in EMEA. I report up to uh, Benny Vandeloot, uh, which Ram will introduce in a, a little bit here. And I also have the sales support in the US market. Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Paul. So uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Um, I saw a lot of batches there with uh, 10, 20, 25, 40 years. Uh, I've been with NEC for 30 years. Uh, it's great to see some great faces. And thank you again for your support to us. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the, the uh, uh, consultants, uh, partners. Uh, you have been supporting us for a long time. A uh, lot of guests from Japan. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Uh, and also, uh, my team, uh, the team who has been helping this put together. So without them, we cannot make this event successful. So again, thank you for that. Uh, today, what I'm going to cover is mostly give you the vision and the strategy. Uh, you'll find a lot of details in the, in the breakout sessions. So if you see something there, you have question, write it down, and definitely we'll go in more details. Again, we have been very, very busy, un unlike the last few years. And the reason we have been busy is because we have been focused on our mission to continue to grow the solution in smart enterprise area so that we can compete better, we can solve customer problems, and then provide you the solutions that will help you sell. And we have been so far quite successful. It's working very well for us. And on top of that, we and you are not only UC player anymore. You are a smart enterprise player like us. So we are going to work on many new solutions that will help you solve customer problem and, again, compete much, much better and then help grow your business. So as far as our vision, in our vision, the main theme that we always follow is the market trends. That's very important to make sure that the solutions and the products that we are going to introduce have all the new trends and help you sell it. So for example, <clears throat> the market is the technology and the computing is changing. It used to be mobile first. Not anymore, it's switching to AI first. You heard it with Mark Aquino, our president, talking about that. So we had to rethink on putting our solution with AI first, using the deep learning machine technology to create the solution so that we can provide you a solution in the area of safety, security, customer experience, and those type of things. The, the solutions in the AI have advanced so much that now a computer or a machine can almost act like a human, and human interaction with machine is growing. So about uh, three months ago, Google announced their first natural speech application. Now they have launched that application for a contact center. In that case, this application or the computer is acting like a con contact center agent. So when a person is calling, the computer can recognize the voice, the accent, and then intelligently respond to the caller. So just an example, right, let's say I'm calling in and I'm talking to an artificial intelligence contact center agent, they can recognize that I am not happy. 
right? So they can say, looks like Mr. Mingani, you're upset with something. Or I see with your accent and name that you are an Indian guy. Or maybe with the GPS integration there, it can say, I see you, you're calling from Grapevine Gaylord Hotel. And I can also see there is an NEC event going on. I mean, those are the factors, concept that we're looking into in putting it together. The another area that we need to monitor very closely is blockchain. Have you heard of blockchain? Any hands up here? Here you go, a lot of people, you know that. So blockchain is one of the disruptive technology that we need to monitor very carefully. So what basically it is, is basically the, the it, keeping track of the transaction. The transaction could be e-commerce. Transaction could be the online banking. So it keeps track of all the transaction in a more end-to-end -end way, like the internet did it for information. So the blockchain is going to be very disruptive, and then it's going to help us improve our solution as the market changes. So for example, the complexities of transaction is changing very fast. There's so much going on online, and the internet banking, or maybe in-apps use, a lot of these things, you use a lot of transaction. So what that will do is it's going to make the transaction very complex. So the blockchain is the techno software technology that will help us make it simple, make it very secure, make it very cost effective. So how is that going to help us in our UC area? Some of the areas that we see we need to monitor that is the fraud detection or in mobility fifth generation application where single number plan on the global basis may happen. So we need to monitor that. So there are many, many other areas that are happening that we are going to monitor and continue to support that. So while we take care of the technology there, we also are looking at the customer pain point, the customer experience. And Paul, with your background, uh, you have been in sales and working with end user directly. So can you share how you are using that experience in creating solution for us? Sure. So given my background in sales and that of several of the folks on my team, we spend a lot of time working with our customers to try and understand what their needs are and what is it that we are trying to accomplish. So uh, in the past, quite often, we built great technology for the sake of building great technology. Here what we're trying to do is we're trying to put the customer first. We're trying to work with them to understand ultimately what their pain points are, what technologies they're looking at, not just today, but two years out, three years out, five years out, and how can we find a way to fit into their overall schema as they look at developing uh, their communications infrastructure, their technology, what applications are they using to monetize out in the field. Uh, and we are in a unique position at, at NEC that we do premise really, really well. And we've got a reputation that our technology is consistent, it doesn't break, it's reliable. Uh, we've spent the last several years moving customers to hybrid environments, virtualizing things like the, uh, the SV platform, where you can coexist with a virtualized SV in a customer's data center and still maintain the integrity of their initial investment, and then follow that up by moving more into the, into the cloud, both public and private. And what you'll see a lot of over the next couple of days is a very big emphasis on cloud, both from the voice standpoint, where voice is really just another application on the network, um, to some of the advanced applications that we'll talk about that integrate things like biometric solutions and third-party integrations into the overall platform to give the customer more of a, a seamless end-to-end -end solution that ultimately meets their needs. Thank you, Paul. Thanks. <clears throat> so this is a monumental task for us. Uh, as you know, uh, most of you have been with here many, many years, most of our technology comes from Japan, or was coming from Japan. And uh, we, got, we, we got great products, uh, PBXs that are working there till for 40 years, the phones are still working there. So great products from Japan, but the market has changed. There's more software-driven and service-driven. And Japan market is very different. 
So what we did last year, uh, we worked with our team in Japan and US and decided to spin off a team here in US to focus on creating software services and solution right here in US. We have seven locations in US that's where we are developing it together based on the needs for this, uh, the global market. Then what we did uh, just to get more global, we, in this April, we also did exactly the same thing in Europe. So we took the team from Paul Kevitt and then split the team into sales and marketing, which he owns it, and the pre-sales, the development, the post-sales got merged into what we call NEC ECT. So with that, it's helping us to focus on global market and bring more products much faster in timely manner in more agile fashion. And you will see a lot of these things coming up uh, in very uh, fast and speed way. So at this time, I would also like to introduce uh, two of my leadership team members, uh, Bene from Netherlands and uh, Charles from France. Can you please stand up? <laughs> so a French kiss from Charles and Bob from Bene, right? <laughs> So again, uh, as you can see, uh, we are uh, trying to now focus on more global market and help uh, meet your requirements as we move forward. So with that, I think, uh, Paul, you were in the channel partner meeting a few weeks ago in yes. AMIA, right? Yes. So maybe I think you got first in experience. Would you like to share how did that go and what was the sure. benefit? So the... Uh the channel partner event was held in, uh, in Nordwijk in, in the Netherlands, uh, I guess it was maybe uh, three, four weeks ago. Uh, great event, very well attended, much like this. One of the things that really struck me was how similar the channel partners are in EMEA as they are here, with one, one exception, of course, being that they come from 70 plus countries and speak 40 different languages. But at the end of the day, um, I didn't see a slide that as Larry put up with the age or the years of tenure of, uh, of the channel partners and the relationship with NEC, but there was a lot of just a feeling of just a loyal, committed group of channel partners. The discussions that we had around the solutions we were developing in the U.S. Uh, were very welcome by them for uh, the potential for us to roll them over to EMEA as well. And at the same time, having had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Paul Kivitt's team and with uh, Benny and Charles's teams in, in EMEA, what I found was that there are some best practices over there that we're going to look at bringing into the states as well to ultimately help the way we support all of our channel partners here because they have come up with some very creative programs to really get their partners on board to promote a variety of technologies. So I'm looking forward to doing that as well. And there are several other members of the European contingent here um, that if you have a chance to, to speak with them, they cover different disciplines and uh, they're a wealth of knowledge. Great, Paul. So as you can see, uh, what we're doing here is cross-pollinating the teams. Uh, the European market is very similar to us and they have a lot of good solutions that they have been selling. So we are uh, working with them together as one team and Paul, as you know, works for and for solutions for the European market whereas Charles and Bene are now supporting for the U.S. market too. So again, those will continue to help. So as part of our smart enterprise strategy, there are three factors there. One is maintain. So UC is still the core. Every business needs to communicate. The way we communicate has changed. So for example, <clears throat> fortunately my son graduated from college last year, a uh, smart kid, but then he said he would like to take a year off. At that time, we convinced him to take a job, so he joined a startup in Austin. Now the startup companies with low funding, what they asked him, instead of staying in Austin, since we are paying you less, you can go and work from anywhere. He raised his hand call mom, I'm coming home. Mom said, come on over, it's great. So he was working from home, 
collaborating through the smartphones, Mac, in the morning till evening. So the communication method has changed. He's doing the presentation, talking to the customers. After six months, he said, he called his boss and he said he wants to quit. So his boss said, why do you really want to quit? He said, I need to go to Europe, Chester, England, and go for my hobby of digital music. And I'll be gone for six weeks, and I know you won't give me six weeks off. I just joined the job. They said, no, 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 you don't have to worry about that. We need you. As long as you can work our times, you can go to Chester, England, and do the same thing you're doing from here. So my point here is the communication, every business needs is the way we communicate has changed. And we are going to implement and continue to grow that. So while we do that, as you saw, we are integrating the AI, the blockchain maybe in future, and, and uh, biometric, uh, IoT, to help you grow into the solutions for the vertical market. And eventually, we are going to create some of the future technology that can help us uh, grow together. <clears throat> so let me speak now a little bit more on what exactly is coming in the pipeline as far as the strategy uh, in our immediate U UC area. So we are making it different. We are taking a different approach. So as I said, we are not just UC partner. We are now a full smart enterprise partner. But most important is that we are one of the only company left who cares about the channel. So we are channel first business. So we're creating solution, we're productizing our solution and so that you can sell it in an efficient and simple way. So that's very important for us as we continue to take that approach. With that approach, I think, as you know, 65% of our business and chan uh, channel partner and the business is SMB, we are very much focused on making sure that you continue to compete well in the SMB area. Now, the challenges we find today together is the SMB market is drifting away towards cloud. But the fact is, there are people, there are customers, and a lot of those who still need on-premise. You, as a partner, also need a good cash flow. If you decide today to move into the cloud, you will either have to decide to become a master agent or agent with somebody else, or need to decide how to bring the food on the table through the subscription model. But with NEC, we will continue to enhance the on-premise solution, so while you can continue to transform yourself into subscription model, I always call it 401 on steroid, which you must do it, but while you're doing it, it's important for you to have an on-premise solution so you can sell it, bring the cash, have the cash flow, so that you have tangible profits there, okay? But while we continue to support you on on-premise, we have to compete with the competitors. We know the market is going in the cloud. So for that, we are still continuing to invest in the cloud. The universe blue cloud, we know for the last four years, we have stumbled a little bit, but again, I'm very confident the solution we have today has changed drastically. You will see more of it during the sessions and at the breakout. So we will offer you an SMB public cloud at the same time, we are also seeing that a lot, lot of large customer, customers need a private cloud. So you will have option for the private cloud. Now while we offer these solutions in all three combinations, including the hybrid, we're still going to provide you smart enterprise technology. So what that means is, it'll be all high availability, it'll be integrated with biometric, and a lot of those solutions. So, just an example, in an SMB, how we have integrated and providing you solution is, let's say, 9100, we have taken the Android phone, and you just saw, when you checked in, an, a facial recognition software on that Android phone. That's basically your integrated smart enterprise productized SMB solution. You will also see another product or solution there, it's called cybersecurity. 
9100 with a product called UTM provides you a cybersecurity solution. In case of enterprise, again, we are doing the same thing for high availability as the enterprise products are virtualized. We still need five nines. So using our FT or Express Cluster or SDN, we are providing you that solution not only on-prem, but in a private data center or public data center. So we'll continue to build and expand from there. As far as focused, SMB strategy is very simple. Uh, as you saw in Larry's chart, that we have been uh, number three, uh, three years in a row, number one in the market. That's not easy. Uh, with your help, with the global help, we have been sustaining the product so the 9100 and SL 1100 will continue to lead the base product. On top of that, we're going to improve the mobility. Some of the things you're going to see which are different from what we have is include the MLC and a new software that's coming out, ST500, as part of the default offering. And then we are adding some application on that, like push to talk and those type of things, so to help you uh, move into more of the mobility strategy. We're adding collaboration. Uh, you have some built-in collaboration and some integrated collaboration from partners. So we, we are going to do that. So one of the other thing I want to inform you, our strategy has changed a little bit. We can develop everything. We are going to work with best of the breed partners, integrate it and bring it together sooner. So they'll continue to help like collaboration type of solutions. We're also looking at bringing in more application. So since we introduce more is more promotion, promotions, what we have seen, the trend in the application sales have gone up, which is again helping you to bring more revenue. So again, that's basically our strategy to continue to keep it simple and add solutions as, as needed to compete in the market. Our enterprise strategy is very similar to SMB. Again, focused on mobility, focused on vertical solution, but the most disruptive thing that you're going to see, and I'll let Paul talk about that, is workflow engine. So workflow engine, as you will see and hear from Paul, is, going to, is a game changer for us. So we will see that. And then similarly, enterprise will be offered in on-prem, cloud, and hybrid models. Okay. The endpoint strategy is also very strong. We're going to continue to bring some new uh, touchscreen video type of terminals. Uh, we will introduce uh, new wireless terminals, especially in the DECT. For the Wi-Fi, we'll continue to provide the client. And we are going to spend more time in producing application that can make our uh, endpoint more smarter and better, okay? So these are some of the examples of smart uh, uh, endpoints you're going to see at the show today. So we have a very low end IP phone to help you from the cost perspective. We have a new Android phone coming out and some of the deck terminals. So again, visit the booth and the sessions to know more about these. So as you saw in um, Larry's presentation, um, 8,000 is coming to an end, and uh, Rod and Peggy have been working on that together. So I know Larry covered some of it, but this is very important for our channel partner this year. Maybe Rod, do you want to comment yeah. on this? So from my viewpoint, smart migration consists of two primary elements, choice and opportunity. So talking about the opportunity from a financial perspective, about 15% of the SV8000s, Aspires, 1000 IVSs, 2000, all of those out there have active SWA currently. That active SWA of that 15% that are still on legacy systems that are coming into life, into support, is a value to you and us of about $8 million. Okay, that's only 15%. There's another 85% that still need to be migrated. So you might call that a pretty big opportunity. In fact, you might call it a mega opportunity. Now, secondly, the opportunity is for engagement with the customer. 
How many customers do you have, like Rom mentioned, are maybe on an 8100, are on an Aspire, and they're looking to migrate to the cloud. But traditionally, our migrations have always been like for like. You didn't have that choice. How many customers had myriads of NEC switches and they wanted to consolidate and simplify management and maintenance and move it into a single platform, whether it was in a 9500, a 3C, or in the cloud, UCAS. So that brings us to choice. With mega migration, which all of you have asked for for probably four to five years, we finally heard you, we finally figured out how to do it, and now we've released it. With mega migration, you can take this mega opportunity and you can take any NEC system. I don't care how old it is, what version it is, you can migrate it to UCAS, Univerge 3C, SV9500, SV9100 Blue, SV9500 Blue. So go forth and conquer the opportunity. Rod, well, thank you very much. Uh, in fact, uh, we were just talking about uh, Frank. You had Frank Milo here. Uh, when we introduced that, Frank called Rod, hey, I've been asking you to introduce this for the last yeah, four years. It's about time. It's about time. <laughs> so again, I think uh, it's the pur main purpose is we're designing this to help you and help ourselves. So it's very important to take advantage of that. And if there's something that we need to make changes, then we will definitely do that. And Paul, maybe you want to cover some of the IT solutions uh, we are going to offer? Sure. So as Paul Kivitz said earlier, the you know, the smart IT, the hybrid IT, is really at the core of all of our solutions. And so, as a communications provider, we are really the only one out there that offers the full suite of solutions for your IT environment and for your customers' needs. So, on the data protection side, and Ram mentioned, we're even now taking that down to the uh, UTM, to the SMB level. So, threat management, virus detection, things like that that we will be providing as a service to allow you to start getting recurring revenue from your customers for that subscription-based service. On the business continuity and disaster recovery side of things, of course, we have the FT servers and Hydra store. And then you add to that some of our other partnerships that we've brought to you, things like Veeam and uh, Nikivo recently. Those are all parts of an overall solution that will allow you to provide a complete complex solution uh, to your customers. SDN, of course, has always been something where NEC has been a leader in, and we continue to do so by moving other services in and combining them with SDN. So SDN plus UC, as an example, allows you to actually start doing dynamic QoS and things out to the desktop using the SDN solution. Private cloud, when, uh, when you go to the expo hall, you'll see some more of our private cloud solutions as well as the infrastructure as a service. Uh, the infrastructure as a service offering that we do within the Iron Mountain Cloud is a very, very um, solid, high security solution. It's also a really good door opener when talking to customers uh, from that infrastructure as a service standpoint that there are very few networks that do what that network does housed in a facility as secure as Iron Mountain. And then of course on the safety and solution we continue to bring more and more of those solutions out to the marketplace. Um, you know, once again, we are focused on covering all of the different things that are required in a smart IT network for all of the verticals and all of the markets that are there. So as we go to market, we continue to look at what's a solution that's required for hospitality? What's a solution for healthcare? What are the special needs of government? And we continue to move in that fashion. You'll see on the solution integration side, uh, NEC AVA, which is the next iteration of our biometric platform that you'll start hearing about soon, which is something that's going to be migrated to the cloud as well as the uh, on-premise based solutions. And then the WFE or workflow engine, I'll cover that in just a little bit. But all of these things, when you wrap them together, they make us very, very different to what your end user and your customers are looking at 
in, in which case also then makes you and your offerings very different as well. So, yep. so where we are going to grow again, um, as I said, Paul, thank you for uh, the IT solution. Um, so on-prem solution, as you know, you'll continue to get it. And if you look at the market, the whole market, people are moving away from that. So you could be, you could be together at least capture that market. While we are doing that, while you're maintain, maintaining the cash flow, we are very much investing a lot of money in cloud services. Now the cloud will not just be the UCAS. We are offering all types of cloud services. So contact center as a service. Of course, the blue 9100, 9500 blue. Uh, you will also hear about some IT cloud, uh, backup as a service, infrastructure as a service. And then something that uh, we are monitoring very closely is the team collaboration. Uh, team collaboration is basically a new trend in the UC where uh, you can, like WhatsApp type application, you can create a team, exchange, do the messaging, get on a quick call, or get into collaboration. So we will be offering that also in the cloud. Uh, so all that thing, all these things, you're going to see it in the, uh, at the booth and also during the session uh, that's coming in there. Uh, we have been actually very busy uh, and investing quite a bit in there uh, to improve some of the feedback we have received from you. Uh, for example, now we have moved our UCAS into a new data center. Uh, we had some challenges in the past uh, having it in CenturyLink. So what we have done, we have moved into the data center where you have the carrier integration completely tied together. So what that means is now I can turn up the service on the same day. I can migrate the DID in much faster way. So that has been done. Uh, we have improved the portal so you can get the coding from there. Uh, the end user uh, portal, which uh, you have asked for last several years, it's already there. Uh, you will see it. Uh, basically, that will allow you and your user, if you give them the permission, to make add moves and changes. And that's one of the important uh, portal that you see. Uh, we are also transforming the billing system. Uh, we had a billing system that will allow you to take the reports, monitor your customers, and see what payments are there. So a lot of changes are already done. More changes are coming. And you'll hear more into, into the breakout session if you go there. And Paul, I think. Uh, on solution, I may ask you to go from other slides here. Sure. So this is the fun stuff, at least it is for me. Sorry about the rest of it, but this <laughs> is the fun stuff. So uh, we've been working very, very hard on the biometric front to really start looking at what is that next phase of biometrics. So let's move beyond the security and surveillance aspect, and let's start looking about what is that customer experience? What can I do to make biometrics actually something that really brings things together as opposed to being something intimidating for people that it's only for security or it's Big Brother watching. And so as Rob, Rob mentioned, you know, when you checked in, you checked in using a, a biometric app. And what you'll see when you go over to the expo halls, you'll see things like a front desk assistant where you're able to uh, register a visitor when they come into a facility, uh, print their badge out with their face on it, notify the host by dipping into Outlook, things of that nature that really now take the, the technology and make it something that's a commercially viable scenario. Then you take that and you move towards you know, airport and VIP lounges and, and things like that where a personalized greeting of a customer becomes really, really important. And so we're pulling that all together and we're adding different building blocks to it. Access control, which you'll see next door, some command and control, some analytics, because um, the old, if you can't, um, can't measure it, you can't manage it. We understand that the analytics and the big data IoT is very, very important. But what we're doing that is truly different is, is what we call the workflow engine. Now, I'm going to caveat that a little bit, that um, I really don't like that name. And I don't think it's very, very descriptive of what the product actually does. So we are really looking for guidance from all of you as you see it next door in operation, as you kind of hear what it does, we'd love to hear some potential ideas for, for a naming convention. 
But in essence, what the workflow engine is, is it's really an application integration or process engine. It really isn't workflows that we all know them. There's a lot of workflow type products that are out there. This is really a integration platform as a service is what this is. So you take a lot of disparate custom programs that can't communicate. I need separate databases for them. I need a whole separate infrastructure. And you pull it all together that anything that has an open API, we can actually build a connector to or an adapter and bring those all together off of a common database, making a common application with a common delivery for an end user. So you know, it, it, it sounds overly complex at times, but it really ultimately becomes fairly simple in the way that we approach it. It's just a very, very different way. So when you, um, if any of you go to high tech next week in Houston, as an example, which is a very large hospitality show, what you will see is about five or six different NEC solutions that are actually running off a common database in a, uh, in a common fashion. So somebody who comes into the booth and registers with Front Desk Assistant, as they move around the booth, whether they see NeoFace Watch, NeoFace Welcome, Ava, uh, NeoFace Access Control, it really doesn't matter what the application is, it will still recognize them because it's using a, a dip into a common database using these connectors to bring all these disparate systems uh, together. The other thing that's really cool about it is that it's kind of the art of the possible. So whatever it is that you can dream up that has an open API, we can do it and we can do it relatively quickly. And if you come to the last session on Thursday, we'll talk about how that all works, what that means to you as a, uh, as a partner um, and how you monetize that. But I'm gonna show a quick video here in a second and the application here that you're gonna see, and I'm sorry, it's just, it's a simple iPhone video. Um, but Frank Milo's team at Matrix brought us into uh, the Target Center in Minneapolis. And the application was to embed uh, biometric cameras or facial recognition cameras at the metal detector level. And to see if we could actually tie that process together so they could have their watch list, both good and bad, um, as well as uh, people coming through the metal detector so they could have it all consolidated at one time. Well, the problem that they found was that the notification that came from the NeoFace uh, biometric platform was either coming in the way of an SMS message, it was coming in the way of an email, it was coming in the way of a phone call. And if you think about somebody standing in front of a metal detector, the typical security guard, they're just looking for lights and sound. They want to know when somebody walks through, it either turns red or it turns green, it beeps or it doesn't beep, and that's how they pull you out of the line for secondary screening. So we had a disconnect. So what the customer asked is, is there any way that you can actually enable your solution to actually give us that same type of metal detector audiovisual. So, you run the tape. See the green light at the top. Now you got the red light, stop, pulled them out, now you can see green again. You know, seems really rudimentary, but the customer asked us about that and within several hours we essentially had isolated a product that we basically had an open API that we could mount to the top of the metal detector to be able to continue moving this forward. And so we came back to the customer in a matter of days and said, yep, we can do this. When do you want us to demonstrate it? You know, they were very, very surprised. And so those are the kinds of things that um, we're able to do with the, with the workflow engine. The other thing is that we're able to build very, very specific applications and use cases for different vertical markets. So. Um, as an example, we've developed a patient check-in scenario for, um, for healthcare. We have a guest check-in one for hospitality. Uh, we are working with several universities to look at doing things like student enrollment for online testing, things of that nature where we can pull different systems together to be able to really give you a customized, tailored solution. So I, I certainly suggest you come over and see it in the expo hall and you uh, stick around for Thursday. I know that's a shameless plug. But you stick around for Thursday when Ray and I do that. And then, um, Rod, you want to talk a bit about the Expo? Yeah. So, Rom and Paul have uh, pretty much covered the Expo already, <laughs> but uh, we'll cover a few things. So, the Expo Hall is right next door, and you'll notice in the middle is the NEC portion. To either side of that, we have our NEC partners uh, that we're very glad and very proud that they're here with us. Um, when you come in, you're going to start at the top with the engagement and analytics. So as Ram and Paul both mentioned, 
we have the facial recognition, the biometrics, front desk, assistant during check-in. So when you go to that engagement pod, it should recognize you, right? That's in the common database. This has been done with the workflow engine. So the front desk assistant that you checked in with was connected through that workflow engine. It recorded your facial uh, face capture into that common database. And so the different applications running there at the biometric solutions area are working off of that same common database, just like that engagement area. And the analytics will show you some capabilities around demographics, age, gender, uh, those type of things, which are important for being able to analyze business process, maybe in a retail environment where you're wanting to know who's looking at this display. Is it hitting the target market that I really wanted? So that's the example of that. Then to the left-hand side there, actually to your right-hand side if you're walking in to the expo, is the SMB communications. Stop by there. We will have uh, SMB applications. You can see some of the new things coming out, as well as we will have the NEC QX switches for PoE. You can learn more about there. those. We'll have the unified threat management application there and cyber, cyber security where you can learn a little bit more about that. Biometric solutions, front desk assistant, surveillance and security, um, safety and security via Neoface Watch, and uh, the, the workflow engine specifically. A lot of progress made on that. The cloud and applications area, learn about the blue experience, see the self-help portal, learn more about what's being done, Learn about 9100 Blue, 9500 Blue, which was just recently released. Uh, also, BCT and UCE Contact Center will be in that area. In the IT Solutions area, uh, we will have the data protection. And by the way, I'll mention something in the next slide about a invitation-only presentation where you will visit that booth, the data protection pod, in order to see if you qualify to be able to participate in that uh, event. On the enterprise communication side, uh, you'll see some of the new terminals, the new low-end GT210, GT890, working on the 3C, as well as the color graphics terminal, which is soon to be released. Along with a brand new op application we're introducing with our partner, Audio Codes, uh, which is the One Voice Operations, which does voice quality management for anything uh, on standard SIP and that has RTCP XR records. So with that, wanted to just mention a little bit about some of the sessions. Larry mentioned this earlier, seven opportunities compared to five last year. Uh, and I just wanted to mention some of the favorites. My very most favorite one is the SWA SV8000 migration. So make sure you come and visit that. Uh, in the data area, IT area, if you're new to IT, you definitely want to go to the Smart IT Solutions Successful Transformation. That's kind of the beginning course to give you information about what's there in a whole gamut. And then the Smart Data Protection Solutions. Of course, from the enterprise and voice side, we have a lot of things from SMB, all the way through Univerge Blue. Transform your business through digital marketing. So if you're not using some of our digital marketing, some of our campaign capability, make sure you visit this session to help energize your business and ramp up your revenue. Again, for the BAS Backup as a Service, if you feel you have the uh, expertise and you're looking to build a backup as a service practice, manage services and get infrastructure as a service from NEC out of Iron Mountain, this session is for you. Visit the, back, the, the data protection pod in the booth in order to get your private invitation. This is by invitation only. And then again, did I mention my favorite session is the SV8000 migration. So with that, I'll hand it back here to Paul. So, it's kind of wrapping things up. Uh, you know, Mark Aquino mentioned 
you know, several things about the, the smart enterprise and, and the, uh, the overall message about what NEC does differently. And most of you, I think all of you probably know, our tagline is also orchestrating a brighter world. And so as we approach all these solutions and as we work with you in the coming year, it really is about paying attention to the way that we live and we work and obviously the way our customers do as well. And so we've got to pay attention to the emerging trends that are coming in the marketplace. And certainly Ram mentioned things like blockchain and, and whatnot. Um, you know, but the advent of, of social media and its importance, the advent of the sheer amount of data out there, and now it is becoming more and more prevalent in the way of data protection requirements. So you look at what's going on in Europe with uh, you know, GDPR and the ability to either capture images and capture information or not, and what you can use it for. And so all of these different things are ultimately going to change the way we work. They're changing the way we live today. Um, I was telling Ram and Rod earlier that uh, Tim Cook, the president of Apple, the other day made a statement, which is, once again, going back to what Mark Aquino was talking about with AI, is that we should not be afraid of AI. We shouldn't be afraid of the fact that computers are going to start thinking like humans. What we have to prevent are humans thinking like machines and thinking like computers. And so, really, as we go to market with all of the things that you'll see over the next couple of days and all the things you'll see coming out of us for the next couple of quarters, this is really the core of what we're talking about. It's about hyper-connectivity. It's about bringing all of these solutions together because they're going to come together whether we like it or not. It's about finding creative ways to use the technology that's in the marketplace to ultimately blend in with what we are offering to our, our customers, our partners, um, and once again, try and orchestrate a brighter world. So at that, Ram, you can wrap it up. Thank you, sir. Yep, Paul and Rod, thank you again. So the, just the last slide, just takeaways, five simple things. We are investing in digital transformation. Uh, we'll work with you. We'll help you. We'll bring the new solution. The cloud is here. Uh, we are investing in the cloud. The workflow engine is a game changer. Uh, as Paul talked about, uh, definitely see that. We can create solutions very quickly. Smart enterprise solution is the way we will help you dif differentiate ourselves. And in the end, we are all not just UC player anymore. We are smart enterprise player.